So we all know by now that a lot of companies, especially startups, are using the cloud to scale their infrastructure, host their infrastructure, and also go to market faster than ever. Cloud offers extreme flexibility to both consumers and engineers, as well as companies. And if you're someone that's looking to get an entry-level position in cloud engineering, there are some core concepts that you need to know or that you will need to understand in order to provide value to your employer. And also, if you wanted to go into business for yourself, there are some things that you're going to need to understand if you want to be proficient as a cloud engineer. For starters, the first thing that you should consider is which cloud provider you're going to choose to specialize in first. As you can see here, AWS has the largest market share of all cloud providers in 2022, followed closely by Microsoft Azure, about 22%, and then followed third by Google Cloud, which is about 10%. You may be asking yourself why this is important, but the market availability or market share that a cloud provider has is going to directly correlate to the amount of jobs that are available within your region. I'm currently in the United States where we have a huge market share of AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Whereas if you're in some place like Asia, it might be more towards like Alibaba Cloud. But if we're sticking to where I currently am, I'm thinking that any of those top three, AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud are gonna be the ones that you wanna stick to. And they're going to provide the most bang for your buck in terms of how much value you can provide to an employer. The next thing that I like to do is I like to sign into the dashboard and I like to go through how all the services look, both the layout and the documentation style to see if it's gonna be conducive to my learning style. This is an extremely undervalued step because I think it causes a lot of people to give up very early on when something's too hard to read initially because we're all just learning at this first step when you're trying to get an entry level job. So the lower barrier to entry you can give yourself, the better chance you have to stick with it and actually learn the provider that you chose. Another step that you can take to ease the burden of first learning your first provider is going through the services and seeing the differences between what the certain companies name their specific services. For example, AWS has their virtual machine service named EC2, whereas Microsoft Azure just has VMs. I know this can seem a bit arbitrary again, but when you're going through the services, it's really important to understand the core services. And I do have a video that I can link up here for you guys uh, with the top 10 services that you want to learn in AWS if you go to choose that specific cloud provider. But learning the services is the core concept of any cloud provider and becoming proficient in it. If you don't understand the core services, services, you're going to have a hard time speaking about it in interviews. And I really think it's another thing that you can drop the barrier to entry on and really kickstart your journey into actually learning the cloud. After you've made your choice for cloud provider, you've gone in the dashboard, you've looked at all the services, I think the next best step is to just sit at the dashboard or of your specific cloud provider and just tinker around a little bit. Click into the EC2 service, click into the VM service, look at what lambdas are, look at what S3 buckets are, look at storage or static storage on Microsoft Azure. It all really depends on what cloud provider you chose. But I think a paramount step to becoming a better engineer is being able to sit at your keyboard or sit at your desk and have no distractions whatsoever and kind of tinker around in the new technology that you're working in. A lot of times you'll find that you go down different pathways that you didn't know before. You can Google specific services and realize that they correlate to other services and just really allowing yourself to be free of any sort of expectations when you're trying to learn and just being able to Google is a really, really great skill to have as an engineer. And it's a really, really great thing to do when you're first learning your first cloud provider or which one you want to pick. Now, I know many people listening to this are going to want actual concrete tasks that they can go out and achieve in order to learn their cloud provider. So let me give you a few right off the bat. One simple one could be to set up a server in your cloud provider of your choice, set that to face publicly towards the internet, and then resolve the IP address in the actual browser. Again, this seems super arbitrary to people that have used the cloud before, but the sheer satisfaction that you get from just pointing a server and configuring it correctly and pointing it to the internet is something that I think can kickstart your learning into the actual cloud. Another task could be to create a user other than the root user that you use to sign up for your account. So for example, when you sign up for a cloud provider, usually what you're gonna have to do is make a what's called a root user. That root user has all permissions from creating other users to billing, to dashboards, et cetera. You're gonna to wanna to create another user in your service of choice. For example, AWS uses I am. Um, you're gonna to wanna to give that specific user some sort of permissions, sign them up for MFA, generate some access keys, and just tinker around and see how the I am 
or the specific user permissions work in your respective cloud provider. The next idea that I can give you guys is now take that user that you just made and sign them up for CLI access, which means generate access tokens so you can access your command line interface and talk directly to your cloud console from the terminal. You can go in there, you can list out storage units, you can list out other users, you can create users in the actual terminal, you can create servers in the terminal, and definitely look at your specific cloud provider's documentation to see better how to do this. But it's really, really straightforward, but it does have that technical aspect of it where you're going to begin using your Linux skills and also being more familiar with different commands from the command line. It's definitely going to be something you're gonna to have to do and be proficient at as an entry-level cloud engineer. A lot of things in entry-level cloud engineering are going to have to do with server server configuration, user configuration, and et cetera. So if you get more comfortable with the server or the terminal now, it's gonna only help you and pay out dividends in the future. The last piece of advice I can give you on becoming a cloud engineer or an entry level cloud engineer is learn a programming language and hone your engineering skills. This can be one of the most difficult obstacles that someone can face when deciding if engineering is for them. I think it can be helpful to sit at your computer and just really think and walk through in your mind that a lot of the work that you're going to do isn't going Going to have step-by-step -step solutions and as a cloud engineer you're going to be sat at your computer and trying to solve problems that may have not been solved by your company before or solved by anyone before and if that doesn't excite you and again it, it should scare you a little bit that that's the fun part but if that doesn't really excite you then i really think that this may not be the profession for you however if that really excites you then i think learning a programming language such as python is really really helpful especially in the cloud i know a lot of people may say typescript now javascript but i think in the actual cloud, the utility that Python has, whether it's using infrastructure as code or IAC or writing one-off serverless lambdas or just writing full stack applications, Python can do all of this, whether it can do it the fastest or not is up for debate. But if you're going to pick a specific programming language to start off with, I think Python's really usable, it's really readable, and it has a lot of utility when it comes to the cloud. If you're looking for a video to get you started on learning Python, I can link one in the description below. I think the best advice I can give you when trying to learn your first programming language is do a tutorial much like the video I linked and then just go right into building projects. I have a whole repository full of projects and also you can ask me in the Discord if you need any project ideas, but I really, really do not like when people get stuck in tutorial hell, which means they do one tutorial, they don't think they learned enough, so they do another and another and another. I think one tutorial will suffice where you learn syntax and all of that, and then you go into building projects and you're solving real world issues that'll help you kind of hone the rest of your engineering skills. Also, I would consider using infrastructure as code or IAC as a part of that essential programming knowledge that I spoke of before. Definitely check out something like Terraform or the AWS CDK if you're not familiar with that essentially what infrastructure as code does is it allows you to spin up infrastructure programmatically, meaning that you can reuse the code and build new infrastructure, scale existing infrastructure, and also collaborate in a centralized repository with other engineers on that infrastructure. On top of that, understanding a tool to utilize infrastructure as code increases your chances of landing a job. Almost all companies that use cloud are really involved and interested in accessing it programmatically in the CICD workflow or continuous integration, continuous continuous delivery workflow. It's a really hot buzzword right now. If you don't know what that means, it's just a bunch of tech mumbo jumbo. That means that you can ship product really quickly. I'll definitely make a video on this in the future. So definitely don't freak out if you don't understand what it means right now. But learning infrastructure as code is really going to help you stand out on your resume. And it's also going to be a valuable skill that you can learn if you want to progress in your career as a cloud engineer. While I can't guarantee you a job in cloud engineering after watching this video, I can say that the tools and the tips that I used in this video are are the same ones that I used to get my first job in cloud engineering. With a great amount of focus, consistency, and some time, much can be achieved. And I really think that if you guys stick to some of these tips a year from now or six months from now, things can look a lot different and you can be in your dream role as a cloud engineer. If you have any questions on any of the things that I said or any comments, definitely leave them down in the comments below or definitely join our Discord to strike up a conversation if you want it to be more long form or you're looking to join our community. We have a lot of really, really smart people in the Discord, especially that can answer any of the questions that you may have if I'm not available. And it's just a really great resource to have as you're going through your journey into becoming a cloud engineer. If you want to keep up with my content, follow me on my socials in the description as well, and I'll see you guys in the next video.